Today's class, we shall continue our discussion on PN junction diodes. Uh, last class, we had seen that uh, in a PN junction, when you apply and uh, when you have an applied voltage across the junction, uh, the carrier concentration at the interface of the depletion region and the bulk changes. Okay, if you have a forward bias the carrier concentration increases above the thermal equilibrium value and if you have a reverse bias it decreases. And we have also seen that the nature of the variation in the bulk region depends on the length of the material with res uh, in relation to the diffusion length. If the length of the bulk region is small compared to the diffusion length, the carrier concentration varies in a linear fashion and if it is long compared to the diffusion length the carrier concentration decays exponentially. So, we sh uh, so, based on that we have two types of devices we had said one is uh, called a long diode and the other is a short diode. Okay. Now, today's class we shall go ahead and see uh, how the currents and uh, uh, the nature of the relations for the currents and the capacitances in a PN junction diode. Well, uh, we have this slide here which shows uh, uh, the case for a long diode okay, where both the P and N regions are long that is long means again in relation to the diffusion length. So, we have two cases one is for a forward bias diode and the other one is for a reverse bias diode. Here we see that <coughs> uh, the carrier concentration on uh, both sides uh, at the uh, depletion with edge is more than the thermal equilibrium value and it falls off exponentially away from the depletion region in the, into the bulk. <coughs> and uh, one point we note is that the minority carrier concentration on the N side is more than that in the P side which implies what does it imply? It implies that the, the doping concentration on the P side is higher than that in the N side because uh, the, the, which means that the minority carrier concentration is less on the P side. Okay. Now, <coughs> this slide also, also shows how the currents okay, that is the electron currents and the hole currents vary in the, in the different regions of the device. For example, if you look at the N side, the minority carrier hole concentration decays exponentially and which means that the current also which is, uh, uh, which is uh, proportional to the gradient of the uh, carrier concentration profile also varies exponentially. So, as the holes are injected from sorry uh, yeah, as the holes are injected from the P side into the N side uh, and these holes diffuse towards the contact on the, on the uh, N side they more some of them recombine and as the holes recombine the, uh, the the concentration reduces and also the hole current reduces it falls off exponentially. Uh, similarly on the P side if you look at the electron uh, concentration profile it falls off exponentially which also means that the electron cu uh, current okay, on the P side falls off exponentially. We also see that on the N side the electron current actually uh, increases. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you look at it this way that right at the contact on the N side 
the current which you see is totally electron current. Okay? And this electron, that means electrons are flowing in. And what happens to these electrons? The electron current decays. That means as the holes are, de as the holes are recombining, they, they will recombine with electrons. So the electron current reduces. And similarly, on the P side of the contact, the current is totally made up of holes. And this hole current reduces. And uh, uh, as we go from the contact on the P side, towards the depletion region. <clears throat> okay. Now, the current, the total current is the sum of the hole current and the electron current, which is a constant. Now, the way to calculate the total current is to sum up, you can sum up uh, the electron current and hole current in any region, any point in the device, but the easiest way is to sum up at the depletion edges, okay, which is the easiest to calculate. So what we do is the total current is we say is the sum of the whole current at the interface at the depletion edge on the n side plus the electron current at the depletion edge on the p side. Okay. Now how do you calculate these currents? Now one way to calculate it, there, there could be uh, different ways to calculate it. One way to calculate it is from the charge profile here. We have already seen that uh, uh, the excess carrier concentration, uh, we have already seen a relation for the excess carrier concentration that is equal to the injection, that is related to the injection rate and lifetime. What is the injection rate basically? It is the current flowing in, isn't it? So you can say that the current flowing in, okay, that is the whole current which is flowing into the end side is given by the charge stored okay, divided by the lifetime. Okay? Because basically, what is the current flowing in? It is, the current is flowing in to compensate for the holes which are lost due to recombination. Because it's in the steady state, so the, the profile is constant. So as the holes recombine, you have to make up, and that is why the holes are flowing in. So you can do it that way. The other way to do it is from the slope of the concentration profile at the depletion edge. Okay? So uh, as you see here, that is given by the excess carrier concentration divided by the lifetime, uh, ex excuse me, divided by the diffusion length. Okay? So you can do it either way. So the total current in the device will be given by Jn plus Jp. And we, what we do is Jn at minus xp, which is the depletion width edge on the p side, and plus jp at xn, which is the depletion width edge on the n side. <coughs> All right. So this is for a reverse bias diode. Here we see that the carrier concentrations at the depletion width edges are in fact lesser, are less than uh, when compared to the uh, thermal equilibrium value. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and here, <coughs> it's, it's almost the same uh, argument, except that uh, we don't have recombination, but you have generation, because the carrier concentration, in this case, the NP will be less than Ni squared. Okay. Okay. The next slide, please. So whatever we have been talking of now is just put it in uh, equation form. Uh, so you see that the excess carrier concentration profile varies exponentially on the n side. This is for the n side uh, in n bulk, which means that the whole current is also going to decay exponentially. And this can be calculated this way, and you get a relation like this, which gives us a constant into exponential Vd by Vt minus 1. Okay? <clears throat> This can also be calculated, as I said, by taking the excess stored charge, Qs, by lifetime, which where the excess stored charge is calculated by integrating the total charge con concentration over the entire region, over the entire n bulk region. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so uh, similarly, if you do the 
electron current on the p side, you get a similar relation and the total current is given by the sum of these two currents and you get a relation I s which is called the saturation current exponential V d by V t minus 1, where I s is given by a relation like this. Now, you see that I s or the saturation current is proportional to the n i squared and what is n i intrinsic carrier concentration? It depends very much on temperature. So, uh, it, uh, the saturation current also is very much a function of temperature and it increases with temperature. This is quite obvious here. Also, if you look back at this relation, if you have a p plus n diode, what is a p plus n diode? <coughs> the, in the p plus n diode, the acceptor concentration on the p side is very much larger than the uh, donor concentration on the n side. So, if you look at the relation for I s, <coughs> uh, N a is very much greater than N d. So, this term is going to be very much less than this term. Okay? So, I s will be equal to this, okay? which is which you see that this is independent of N a. So, it does not depend on the acceptor concentration. So, it depends on the concentration on the lightly doped side. <coughs> and uh, obviously, if you want to reduce I s, what you have to do? You have to in increase the concentration on the lightly doped side. Okay, if N D increases, I s reduce. Okay. <coughs> the next slide. So, this uh, shows a similar case for a short diode. Okay, carrier concentration profiles in a short diode where the concentration profiles varies. Uh, uh, as a straight line, okay, linearly, uh, linear variation, which means that, so this is for a forward bias diode, this shows the excess charge concentration in fact, and uh, which means that <coughs> the currents here are going to be constants. In fact, the reason is that there is no recombination in, in, the, re in the device, very little recombination I should say, because the length of the device is very much smaller compared to the diffusion length okay and almost all the recombination takes place only at the uh, contacts okay so the next slide <coughs> so this is um, the same um, what we have discussed so the excess carrier concentration there is a linear decay which means that the current is a constant okay the the current the minority carrier currents are constants which implies that there is very little recombination in the device and if you look at the current <coughs> concentrations uh, if you look at the current relations you will find that uh, you do not have the uh, diffusion lengths coming into picture but you have wn which is the length of the n region n bulk region and you have wp which is the length of the P region. Okay, so the diffusion lengths are actually replaced by the lengths of the devices. So in this case, what is important is the length of the devices. So this is the relation for I s. So the difference in equation for I s in short and long base diodes is that the L p and L n are replaced with W n and W p. Okay, so the diffusion lengths are replaced by the lengths, actual lengths of the devices. Yes. <coughs> yeah. So the next we come to, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So the next what we come to is uh, the capacitance voltage relations. Okay. Uh, you know that <coughs> there is a lot of stored charge in the semiconductor in the p-n junction device, <coughs> and whenever you have a stored charge and the charge is varying with the applied voltage, you have a capacitance, <coughs> and these capacitance play have an important role to play in the operation of the devices. Well, there are two types of capacitances. One is the stored charge capacitance or the depletion capacitance, which is due to the charge stored in the depletion region. And this is going to dominate at reverse bias, when the device is reverse biased. And you have the other capacitance, which is due to the stored charge in the bulk regions, that is the minority carriers. Or the, okay? So, that is going to uh, be more prominent or more important when the device is forward biased. So, the space charge capacitance actually it, it has got a relation that is basically the charge dq dv that is q is where the charge stored in the space charge. So, you, you get a relation like this finally when you solve 
uh, A epsilon by W, that is the very well known capacitance relation, where A is the area, epsilon is the dielectric constant, and W is the depletion width. And this gives a relation like this CJO divided by square root of 1 minus VBI by VD, where CJO is the capacitance for zero bias when VD is zero, and VD is the applied bias. All right, and here what we see is, uh, and the important thing to note here is, for a P plus N diode, okay, that is again we have seen that the space charge region penetrates more into the lightly doped side. So if you have a P plus N diode, the space charge region is almost entirely in the lightly doped side. So it is independent of the doping on the heavy doped side. Okay, so it is going to be independent of Na, and so it depends on the doping concentration. So higher the doping concentration, the space charge width is going to be less. So which means that the capacitance is going to be more. So uh, the ca capacitance increases for higher doping concentration. And this, uh, in this relation, the capacitance, so as you apply more and more reverse bias, what happens is the space charge region widens. So W is going to become more and so the capacitance reduces. So this capacitance depends on the bias applied, reverse bias, and it reduces for higher reverse bias. <coughs> Next one. Then the, the other, you have the other capacitance, that is the store charge or the diffusion capacitance. Uh, the diffusion capacitance we have seen is, uh, what we have said is, this depends on the stored charge in the semiconductor, that is the that is the uh, mobile charges, that is electrons and holes. Okay? And this uh, it can be shown that this stored charge is proportional to the diode current because you see that the stored charge is proportional to exponential Vd by Vt minus 1. Okay? That is you see that the minority carrier concentration and the depletion edge is dependent on that as well as the current is proportional to that same thing. So the, the stored charge is proportional to Id. And so you can write that Qs is equal to tau d into Id. This proportionality constant tau d is actually called the diode transit time. Okay, so it's an important parameter in a diode. Is, okay, uh, this is called a t transit time because it has got the unit of time. Okay, and uh, so if you now uh, obtain the capacitance, store charge capacitance Cs, which is given by dQs by dV. And you replace this ID with the current expression in the diode, that is Is exponential Vd by Vt minus 1, you get a relation like this. <coughs> so the st store charge capacitance is proportional to the diode transit time. It is also proportional to the, the diode current. All right? So these are the two things it is proportional to. Now, <coughs> This diode transit time, which is related to the stored charge capacitance, uh, st stored charge and the current, okay, uh, is different for a short base diode uh, and a long base diode. For a short base diode, this diode transit time is actually given by this relation, which means that it is dependent on the length of the device. Okay? That is W n squared by twice dp. In fact, it is proportion. It depends on the square of the length of the device. And for a long base diode, this diode transit time is nothing but the lifetime. Okay, the minority carrier lifetime. Okay, so so this is a very important uh, relation. Yes. Yes. Next, we come to another important aspect of. Uh, uh, this diode operation, which is very important for this course for us, that is uh, integrated circuits, digital integrated circuits, because in a digital integrated circuits, you have voltages, suddenly varying voltages applied to the d device, and uh, the delays are dependent on how it, uh, the device reacts to such transient situations. Okay? All right. So, <clears throat> This gives us the turn on transient of the device. Now, you have a 
voltage source here, you have a diode here and you have a resistance here. Now suppose you apply a voltage which is say initially the voltage is 0 volts, okay, there is no voltage applied. Suddenly the voltage changes to Vf, okay, at time T1 say and this Vf is in a such a direction that it forward biases the diode, okay. <coughs> So what happens is at time T1 the diode voltage is 0, okay. So the current, okay, is going to be almost equal to Vf by R. It just goes up. Vf say is a large forward voltage, okay. So, so the current flowing in is Vf by R, okay. And then what happens is that is the situation which we are going to discuss now, all right. Now, in order to understand this transient analysis, we have to understand this charge relations. We have seen in a diode, in a steady state, the diode current is related to the stored charge by this relation, I d is equal to Q s by tau d, that is Q s is proportional to I d. Now what happens in this transient situation, okay, that is once you suddenly apply a voltage. Now this relation is must be modified okay, by another relation like this, I d is equal to Q s by tau d plus d Q s d t. What does it mean? It means that <coughs> say initially, if you look at this initial situation, all right, the total charge is 0 initially okay. and then what happens is there is a current flowing in. What is current? Current is rate of flow of charge. So what happens to the charge stored in the device? So initially I d is equal to d q s d t, all right. That is the current is equal to the rate of increase in charge. So as the, the charge is increasing, q s is no longer 0, it is also increasing, okay. As this increases, this term goes on increasing and what happens to this term? d q s d t it keeps on reducing because I, this total current which is a constant, okay. The, the reason behind this is if you look at it, you see why we put it as a constant is that when you apply a large forward bias say 5 volts, okay, and you have a diode like this in the forward direction, uh, the diode voltage, you know, the forward direction it can vary only by a small amount, okay. I think I should have drawn that but anyway. So, uh, <coughs> So this voltage is always much larger than the diode voltage. So we can always say that the current flowing is almost equal to Vf by R, okay, it is a constant. So if you have a constant current here, okay, and the sum of these two components is a constant. So as more and more charges are generated, okay, this term goes on increasing and this goes down. So finally what happens as this goes up? keeps going up, okay, I d will be equal to Q s by tau d, okay, and then you have a steady state, d Q s d t is 0, so charge does not increase. So what happens is if you look at this charge profile, okay, again I think, uh, yeah, in this case we have taken up a P plus n diode say, okay, in a P plus n diode the stored charge in the P plus side is going to be almost negligible, okay minority carrier stored charge. So we can only concentrate on the end side. So initially the charge keeps building up with time, all right. And finally you reach a steady state, okay, which is what you expect, okay. When a current IF is flowing, okay, uh, you, you will have a, a final stored charge and then that you reach uh, uh, finally. So this is the relation one has to take into account, which basically says that if a current is flowing in, okay, uh, Qs by tau d is the normal steady state uh, relation, okay. That is, when a current flows into the device, it is just what is it doing is, is for example, in long base diode, this tau d is equal to the lifetime, okay. So the current flowing in compensates for the charge loss due to recombination. Okay, so I d is equal to the the, uh, the charge 
flowing in, charges flowing in, this compensates for the charge loss due to recombination. So if I d is greater than Q s by tau d, what happens to the excess charge? It builds up. So it gives rise to an increase in charge. So this is the relation okay, which we will always take into account for a transient situation, be it diode or for transistors. Okay, it is a very important relation. <coughs> so this equation has to be solved. <coughs> so when you solve this equation for Q s okay, with the boundary condition that uh, initial condition that the charge is 0 at time t is equal to 0, you get a relation like this <coughs> which says that at time t is equal to infinity q s becomes equal to i d tau d. Okay, that is what you expect finally, the final steady state. Now, if you are current i d flowing, the charge is given by this. And then the diode voltage, okay, you know that this is the well known relation that basically you have written it in a different form that the minority carrier concentration at the depletion edge is equal to uh, uh, the the value at thermal equilibrium value into V d by exponential V d by V t minus 1. We have neglected the 1 when V d is much greater than V t. Okay. And then if you substitute it here, we get a relation like this which shows that in, initially the, it, it almost increases uh, li, linearly uh, towards P d by V t. Okay. Uh, finally, it becomes, it sort of uh, saturates. So, <coughs> The important point to note here is that when you apply forward voltage to the diode, okay, the diode, see the charge is increasing okay, and the minority carrier concentration at the depletion edge is related to the voltage across the diode. Okay. So since the charge cannot increase instantaneously, it will take a time to increase, the voltage drop across the diode also takes some time to increase. Okay, because the minority carrier concentration is dependent on the voltage across the di diode. Okay, so the diode voltage goes up to its final value. Okay, but it takes some time. Okay, so this time is important. Okay, it does not react immediately. So this gives rise to a delay. Okay, <coughs> the next one. So. Uh, well, the turn on transient is not so serious, but the turn off is more serious, we shall see that. So what you had is now, you had applied a voltage Vf, okay, forward voltage and you had a current flowing, forward current flowing in the device okay, and the diode voltage was in, the, say, in the steady state it is Vd. Then suddenly at time t is equal to T2 you change the direction of the voltage. Okay. You apply a reverse voltage Vr. All right. uh, <clears throat> this reverse voltage, what do you expect when you apply a reverse voltage to a diode? The current should go to 0, is not it? In a diode, the reverse current is 0. Okay. So, but th that does not happen, that is what we are going to see. So again, we have the same relations here. In the steady state, at time t is equal to less than t2, the forward current is given by Vf minus Vd, that is the diode voltage, Vf minus Vd by R, that is equal to Qs by tau d. Okay. <coughs> at time t is greater than t, uh, t2, the, the current, reverse current is equal to Vr minus Vd, that is the diode voltage, divided by R and this is equal to Qs tau d plus dqs dt. Okay. Now what happens is, this ir is negative, this reverse current is negative. All right. So you have a current because vr is negative, okay. so you have a current flowing in the reverse direction. So what happens is, this dqs dt is going to be negative, which means that the charges are going to be pulled out. Okay. So whatever stored charge is going to reduce. So initially you had this, this type of profile. Okay. Now as you have dqs dt is negative, so the charge is going to reduce. So it goes like this. You know. With increasing time, you see that the charges keep on reducing. 
okay and as the charges keep on reducing what happens to the diode voltage it was at t2 it was forward biased but you see it is going to only keep on reducing slowly okay because it takes time to remove all this excess stored charge okay so again the charge depends on the voltage okay so as the charge keeps on reducing the forward voltage keeps on reducing but one must realize that it is not a very fast process okay that is uh, you have for example uh, when you forward bias a diode the minority carrier concentration increases okay by several orders of magnitude it is proportional to exponential vd by vt okay so to remove a small amount of charge or or, or in other words to remove uh, if you remove even a large amount of charge i should say the voltage drop is very small the change in voltage is very small isn't it okay so even when you have removed a large amount of charge the forward voltage has reduced by a small amount okay so it takes a long time to remove this excess charge because if you even if you have 10 to the power 4 here you know the carrier concentration at thermal equilibrium it may go up to 10 to the power 12 or 13 or 14 you know so many orders of magnitude it can increase depending on the forward voltage at the, this edge now but once you reach this point the zero point that is this shows actually the excess stored charge then the relation vd becomes negative okay and once it becomes negative okay you can there is a small charge to be stored uh, if you remove a small amount of charge okay the voltage changes by a large amount okay so once you reach this point you now the voltage is going to reduce very fast okay so what happens is what is happening is the voltage diode voltage drops by small amount and then it falls very fast okay you are removing this charge so what what about the current which is flowing the current is given by this voltage minus this diode voltage applied voltage minus diode voltage divided by r okay now from this period t2 to t3 you see the diode voltage has changed by only a small amount okay so what about the reverse current so you are having a forward current in at time t2 you apply a reverse voltage oh, okay the current becomes uh, it becomes an almost a large reverse current see if you see that if vd is if it's negligible compared to vr you apply a large reverse voltage say minus 5 volts or minus 10 volts say okay <coughs> it will be almost equal to vr by r okay and this is a large reverse current will flow in the device okay so a large reverse current is flowing in a diode okay in a diode when you switch off okay you it's, it, behave, it you expect it to behave as a rectifier okay and you do not want any reverse current to flow okay but you see in this case a large reverse current flows up till the time t3 and then of course it switches off very fast because this voltage across the diode becomes negative okay it tends towards vr okay and as this tends towards vr okay the drop across this resistance is almost zero so the current actually falls to zero so finally the diode voltage becomes almost equal to the applied voltage okay so this time is called the storage delay time okay that is the delay due to the stored charge in the device and basically it is the time required to remove the excess stored charge in the device when the diode was forward biased okay so when you solve this equation okay and with the condition that initial condition that the initial stored charge is given by this relation okay qs initially is given by if into tau d okay you get a relation like this all right and when you put at time t is equal to t3 the stored charge goes to zero okay you can solve for ts which is nothing but t3 minus t2 which is the storage delay time ts is equal to t3 minus t2 and you get a relation like this okay so it is proportional to tau d which is the 
diode transit time because obviously because the stored charge is actually proportional to tau d. So, if tau d is larger you have excess you have larger stored charge. So, you require more time to remove that charge okay. And also the interesting thing is it is it is depends on 1 plus i f by i r okay ln of 1 plus i f by i r. So, i f is the current when the diode was forward biased initially and i r is the reverse current flowing in the diode this large reverse current which was flowing in the diode okay. So, if i f was larger okay storage delay time would be more because you had initially you had large storage stored charge. And if i r is large storage delay time would be less because you have a, this i r or the reverse current is the current which is drawing out the excess stored charge is not it. This initially you see that i r is equal to minus this d q s d t okay. So, it is the uh, current which is drawing out the stored charge. So, if i r was larger okay it would uh, re remove the stored charge faster. So, the delay time would be less. In fact, if, if you see that if i r is very much larger than i f okay very very much larger and you can neglect this term then stored charge would be 0 okay. Yes. No, it depends on the applied voltages. This it depends on the applied voltages. Say, suppose you apply a very large reverse bias voltage. Okay. See, this I R is given by V R minus V D. Okay, and I F is given by V F minus V D. Okay. Now, depending on the values of V F and V R, it depends on that. So, if you if you apply a smaller reverse voltage, say minus one volt or so, this may not be very large. Whereas I F, you know. If you apply, uh, it depends on the forward diode current. Okay, it could be a very large quantity. So uh, uh, the the point is, you require a large reverse current to remove the charges faster. But at the same time, you would have to take into account that you will have a large reverse current flowing through the diode, which is which you do not want also because I mean uh, the diode is not supposed to uh, have a reverse current. Okay. So, it is up to you I mean uh, what do you want okay. if you want to do it faster you have to have a large reverse current. Okay. So, all right. so, this is the turn off transient of a diode. So, you see that uh, this, this very important aspect of diode switching okay. and we shall also see uh, how this, this is the same thing you know it also manifests itself in a transistor where you have the stored charge delays. Basically, the delays are due to uh, the uh, stored charge in the devices, the bulk regions, where especially the, it is important when you want to switch off a device because of the excess stored charge in the bulk regions. Okay, and uh, it is not a uh, that excess stored charge has to be removed, but there is so much excess stored charge. Okay, it takes some time. Okay, and th that gives rise to delays. Okay, we shall see again uh, see about this in the, uh, when we go to a transistor how it also becomes very serious. Okay. So, with that we basically come to the end of the discussion on diodes and then we shall take it uh, go to into transistors. But before that I just uh, want to tell you uh, about another here we what we have discussed is uh, the p n junction diodes. Okay, and we have seen that the current voltage calculations okay, uh, the diode current versus the diode voltage if you plot on a linear scale it is something like this all right uh, and okay now you have another type of diodes okay which is not a pn junction diode as such but it is a, a, a 
formed by the junction of a metal and a semiconductor. I would just like to introduce that. That is called a Schottky barrier diode and uh, which also has a similar relation for current. Okay, just like a normal diode. Okay, now this short, um, but the the saturation currents are much higher in a short key barrier diode compared to a p-n junction diode. So, in fact, they are more than a few orders of magnitude higher. Okay, so how does it manifest itself in uh, the current voltage relationship? So, if this is for a p-n junction. <coughs> For a short key barrier diode, okay, the current voltage relation is going to be like this. Okay. So, the cut in voltages of a short key barrier diode is much less compared to the P n junction diode. Okay. And the reverse currents okay, for a short key barrier diode is going to be higher compared to the P n junction diode. Okay. The Schottky barrier diode is formed as we said from uh, is a junction of a metal and a semiconductor, but it is all metals and all to get with uh, in junction with a semiconductor does not give a Schottky barrier diode that is to be remembered. Okay. For example, aluminum on N type silicon gives a Schottky barrier, okay. but aluminum with P type silicon does not give a Schottky barrier diode, but it is uh, more of an ohmic nature. Okay, that is, uh, there is no rectifying properties. Okay, so it is important to note that uh, you do get Schottky barrier diodes for, with some metals and semiconductors, but not always. Okay, and all metals and semiconductors, in when they form a junction, do not have a Schottky barrier diode. So, <coughs> uh, I, I wanted to int uh, introduce this. So, I, we want we, we shall not go into the details or theory of a Schottky barrier diode, which is actually quite complicated, but uh, externally, okay, it is the current voltage relations are almost similar except for this difference okay, that the Schottky barrier diodes have a larger uh, saturation current. Okay. And this is in fact made use of okay, in, uh, uh, in, many in many circuits as we shall see when we go ahead. Okay. The next uh, as you know, uh, the next device uh, which we shall take up quite logically is the bipolar junction transistor okay uh, which actually consists of two junctions as you know uh, compared to a diode which has just one junction it is a three terminal device uh, we shall actually take up the model of a bipolar transistor in the next class but today i would just like to introduce to you the device structure. <coughs> in this slide, we have the device structure of an integrated circuit bipolar junction transistor. Now, this integrated circuit bipolar junction, uh, bi bipolar junction transistor is different from a discrete bipolar junction transistor. That means, discrete means if you have one single device. Okay. It has to be different because in an integrated circuit, you are fabricating a large number of devices simultaneously. Okay? And the individual devices must be isolated. Okay? So, that makes its structure slightly more complicated. So, it is, uh, it, it is uh, one must have in mind okay, the actual structure of the transistor uh, in order to understand a lot of things. So, here you see the basic transistor structure n p n okay n p n this is the basic transistor structure all right you have the n emitter p base and this n region is the collector from which a contact is taken here so this is what is called a planar technology that planar technology means that 
all the contacts are taken from the same plane, okay, which is essential for an integrated circuit. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, th there are uh, some other things okay, which you can see here. You have an n plus here at the bottom that is called the buried collector. The purpose of this n plus region is that usually in a bipolar transistor, the n region or the collector n region is the most lightly doped region in the device, okay? and which means that it is going to have a higher resistance. Okay, and this higher resistance gives rise to a series resistance, which is going to uh, affect the operation of your device, especially for digital circuits, because um, in digital circuits, when the output voltage should be low, any series resistance would mean that the output voltage would not be as low as you expect. Okay, so, and also for high frequency transistors, it's also very important. So, <coughs> so this N plus, so the current in this device is actually going to flow down like this. Okay through the buried collector which is n plus so it is a lightly it is a low resistance region okay and then into the collector contact here you have an n plus here the reason for this is because as i as we just said that a metal uh, with a n type semiconductor is a gives a short key contact rectifying contact but we want a ohmic contact Okay. So, here this n plus, the purpose of this n plus is to have an ohmic collector contact here. Okay. And then you have these P, P regions. So, you see that the device okay, is uh, this, this transistor is actually sitting on an island okay, with a P region. See, this is the P, the substrate is P, this is P. So, this region is embedded in uh, region surrounded by P regions. So, usually what is done is this P n junction, you see always you have P n junction all over all uh, on all sides of the device, this P n junction is reverse biased okay, and this forms an isolation. So, this is an island in which you have a transistor, you have similar islands okay, on which you form other transistors and then they are interconnected from the top. Okay. So, on the silicon, okay, these devices, all individual devices are isolated. Okay. This is a PN junction isolation, which in fact is a rather old technology. Uh, nowadays, uh, different, uh, many other types of isolation, uh, like mostly most popular is oxide isolation, is taken uh, care of, uh, is, is done, uh, which has many advantages. But anyway, the idea is important. Okay, that you require an isolation and this is the structure of the device. Okay. And you can see that many things, okay. for example, uh, one small thing to notice uh, that this is the intrinsic device NPN, but you have many other regions, for example, this P region which is essential for taking contact, which is called the extrinsic part of the device, but it gives rise that when you have stored charge in the base, you will also have stored charge here, okay, which is a parasitic effect. So, in order to understand the working of the device, okay, one must actually have an idea of the total structure of the device. So, we shall take up the modeling of the bipolar transistor in the next class.